Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Round the Table, live with Christian Concern. And today, uh, as we come to the end of May, we're discussing Pride Month and all of that means and how Christians can respond to it. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Steve Bigu, our Head of Education at Christian Concern. Welcome, Steve. And also, good evening. And also Andrea Williams, our Chief Executive at Christian Concern here. And hopefully soon uh, by Mike Davidson, who's got a few technical issues from Core Issues Trust. Um, Steve, let me come to you first. Pride Month is coming up in June, it, you know, and we've got half term next week or the week after. It, it's uh, it's there. Um, and by the way, if you're watching live on Facebook or YouTube, you know, is your town celebrating Pride? Is your city, your school, your workplace celebrating Pride? Do you know what plans they have? Uh, put it in your comments. Let us know, and uh, and let's let's talk about it. But Steve. Schools, what happens in schools in Pride Month and what's the issues that you have with that? Well, it's become such a, uh, an event that's become embedded in culture now, Pride Month in June, that it's inevitably having significant impact on schools and what teachers are choosing to do within those schools. It's 50 years since the first Pride March celebration in, in London. So there's kind of particular significance to this particular month. Um, where there's a real push to celebrate it across the country. And um, if, you, if you look on Gay Pride Shop, for example, their website, you can find out, if you wanted to find out if there is uh, a Pride event happening in your city or town, I'd be very surprised if there isn't one happening in your city. Um, in my own market town up the road here, they'll be starting off outside one church, finishing up into, outside another church here. And, and of course, they're, they're welcoming everybody to, to be a part of the, of the Gay Pride celebration it's a, it's a kind of huge marketing thing there's huge numbers of parties and events and there'll be thousands of people celebrating um kind of sexual freedom and liberation of of lgbtqi people and it's, it's a bit like uh, you know all religions they have their all religions and belief systems have their saints and they have their rituals and their festivals well like you'd have lent or ramadan perhaps for for muslims this particular month june as pride month is the the celebration around this particular belief and ideology which is of course focused around sexual identity sexual expression and children and all people are being encouraged to join in being encouraged to essentially it's like a kind of conversion agenda it's like a new national religion isn't it i mean yeah. the way they described it there is that it is a new national religion it's in the curriculum schools are teaching it to our children and the way in which it has shifted is not um is is although it's absolutely all about um so-called sexual freedom it's all about sex so-called sexual identity or actually the identity of a person they say it's their identity founded on their sexual behavior founded yeah. on their sexual attractions but all of this is what we say now is something that is intrinsic or that's how it's uh, portrayed and is then placed into the public space as something that is a matter of celebration. Now, as um, Steve has pointed out, will be in towns and villages up and down the country, but also in our schools. So it is the new religion mm -hmm. and dare to question the new religion and you will find yourself um, not tolerated. It's quite ironic that this is supposedly in the name of equality, supposedly in the name of tolerance, supposedly in the name of being inclusive, when in fact what this does um, is exclude anyone that dares not approve. And are, you saying, are you saying that um, Christians should not, not try and question this then, Nadja? Is that what you're saying? You know, keep quiet, shut up, don't question it. Is that what you're saying? Tim. <laughs> <laughs> You know me well enough to know that I'm not saying that we should not question pride. I think that what is absolutely extraordinary is this, that many up and down the country will not really be thinking necessarily yeah. about what this really is. They'll dress up in celebratory colours, in rainbow colours. They will go into their local town or local space. And although there will be quite a lot of I'd call it sexual, a sort of sexual brazenness, probably, um, that's, that's evident. Uh, children will be there, 
and it will be all mixed in and people will not be able to decipher the muddle. They'll just yes. be caught up in a caught part of it and dare to question it. And you may be called, oh, a bit of a party pooper. You're a bit miserable. But in fact, it's the opposite. In fact, we, what we, uh, in fact, biblical sexuality is freedom because in Jesus Christ, there is life and light and wholeness and purity and beauty. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you look at the morning after of these pride parades, and I know because I lived for many years, uh, for two decades, close to Brighton. Right. Brighton and the and the difference between night and day, and and but um, and and what happens in the morning after? I've been running the morning after yeah. uh, through the side streets. Then you then you will then you will actually see. Yeah. So, and just to comment, on, just comment yeah. on schools. Sorry, yeah. again, schools schools get caught up with this, and and children get caught up with this. We've a Christian concern. We've got people regularly contacting us, teachers, parents, governors, people saying to us, "What on earth are they doing in my school?" I, I we've got something live at the moment. I, I won't say say where, but where they're going to be taking the year tens to the local gay pride parade from the as school, a school as a school lesson, like for a school a, lesson as a school trip and the parent is saying to us what do i do how do i handle this well we're, we're we're regularly communicating to parents particularly and to try and help teachers who are trying to navigate this as the as the culture changes so quickly in our schools we're helping them to understand how they should and can complain and um there's there's various articles we've got on our website i do encourage anyone that's watching this to sign up to the christian concern emails to get the information that we're putting out about this there's an article that that i've written that i think might well appear in the chat um, which is saying is is your school celebrating pride in june but I, I reckon about half of them will be marking or celebrating pride in some way shape or form you 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 think about half of schools in the country that's my assessment of it as i as what i do is i, I go on school websites I, I i type in pride or lgbt and I, I just look at a variety of schools picking up on the the frequency of these things and it, it's not it's often really what subtle. kind of things they don't I mean, yeah, taking the kids on a trip to a pride march that's that's quite unusual surely steve what kind of things go on usually in, in schools about this kind of thing it's, it's unusual now but um with the direction of things that probably become a, a required element perhaps of um relationship and sex education um the kinds of things that are going on are often quite subtle and under the radar so you have to be very vigilant as parents parents should really be making sure they're reading the newsletters that schools send out looking out for what is being celebrated how it is being celebrated and they must ask questions. If they if they pick up on anything, you must ask. And if you need to, you do, must explain. So what that relates to, Steve, is a question I was going to ask you, which is do schools have to tell the parents about Pride events? Presumably they would have to tell about a school trip, put it that way. <laughs> yes. Well, as I say, obviously certain things will be communicated to parents about events that would normally be communicated about, so school events like that. But the kind of diversity events that schools will be delivering um, – it, try to encompass all the issues. So you will you will include race, for example, in those diversity events. And just as another thing, we'll tag on the fact that we're we're talking about pride and having a rainbow flag and having people expressing how it's it's great to be able to sexually express yourself as a gay man or a lesbian woman or as somebody who's got the identity of having transgender. Those things will be brought in as part of the, those diversity events. So unless you're really vigilant and you're asking and you're talking to your children about what's happening in school, those things as part of school life will be happening. There's there's a real move to try to integrate as well these kinds of topics in, across the whole curriculum. Across the whole curriculum. So let me, so here again, this new religion, this new religion, which takes on a kind of worship status within because schools feel they are obligated to explain what it is to include it in all parts of the curriculum to take a year 10 children to pride or indeed to have pride parades in their schools or so-called inclusive parades in their schools we see all of this we deal with this at the christian legal center day in day out practically the um how sad is it that our children know more about pride, know more about sex, human sexuality than they know about the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas, his resurrection at Easter and Pentecost, which is what we could be teaching our children right now. We could be moving, we could be talking about Pentecost. And 
that is the that's the state of our that's the state of the nation it's the state of the school situation and we need to know exactly what it is that we're doing um the, the harm we're doing to our children the the way in which we simply parent we've got to a place even whereby the church feels that this is normal parents feel that it is normal for their children to be sexualized yes, i know yes. that, um, mike davidson tim i think that he has managed to uh, solve his technical issues and is behind yes great yeah no great let's bring mike on then if he's um if he's here oh, mike hi nice to see you oh is that working all right mike can you hear us okay hi this is live folks <laughs> But we are next is we have someone there um, on YouTube. Is it saying uh, she's got a five year old already been taught about um, LGBT stuff? Presumably is what that means and pride and all that kind of stuff. Going on yeah, there. very well, common. Let me say, and let me say on that, that's the case indeed. There's this very simple. That's the case of Izzy Montague. Yes, this is the case that's coming up in two weeks time. Please tell us me. about that. Tell us about that, Andrea. Well, this is the most extraordinary case where um, the pride was going on in um, Heaver's Park, um, Heaver's Farm Park School. Steve, correct me on the exact uh, Heaver's title. Heaver's Farm, yeah. Heaver's Farm uh, School. And Izzy uh, complained about this and complained how sex education was being delivered to her son, Isaiah, who was... Um, only only five at the time indeed it'd be, it, this was happening even younger than five and as a result um just for making the complaint um found herself at odds with the the head um and indeed her son who was had done really well at school then found himself um put into tension the very day that he uh, that she complained so tell us what the case is then, Ajax. It's coming up in court, isn't it? Um, week after next. Yes. Well, we're going to um, be be talking uh, with th that. That case is really the a discrimination. Uh, it's a, it's talk. It's with regard to the discrimination against um, Izzy and against her child in the delivery of education, failing to really um, respect and understand her rights as a Christian uh, to be able. Um, to withdraw her child from such education um, if necessary. And, and this is this is what we see. I mean, the, the, it was the leadership within the school that were driving a particular sort of agenda forwards. And when you have that in the senior leadership, uh, this impacts every aspect of school life. And so if, if you're just sending your child up to the, to the school up the road, you, you need to be careful. You do need to look, you need to be vigilant. You need to be really serious about asking the school what they are teaching around LGBT relationships and what age they're teaching this stuff. The comment that came in about the five-year-old, we're, we're seeing that all the time, that they're they're speaking to young children about what different families are, which sounds fine, doesn't it? Different families. But then explaining that if you have two mums, that's those are lesbians, and that's when two girls love each other. And that the language being used to small children is inappropriate. So they, they start to own that identity, because guess what? As a five-year-old girl, I tend to have and prefer to love friends who are of the same gender. So they start to own this kind of language over themselves. And this kind of inappropriate, age inappropriate language and teaching is, is flowing through all aspects of the curriculum. And when you've got leadership there that are driving this forward and are being taught and trained by their multi-academy trusts that you must be yeah. inclusive in these kinds of ways, pride yeah. gets celebrated and so much more across the curriculum. And, and parents it's, need to- you, how, does this, how does all this sort of emphasis on sexuality and sexual beings and sexual behaviors fit with safeguarding in schools? So that's a really important question. There's a, there's a real irony in, in so much of this because a lot of the arguments for putting these things into school are around anti-bullying and protection of vulnerable yeah. children and young people. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's, gone, it's gone to the extent that these issues that are now being presented to young children are being presented because we're trying to protect young people who may have same-sex attraction from feeling like they're isolated and they're on their own. And in order to protect them from that, we must teach young children about the kinds of families and sexual behaviours that they may get involved in as they as they get older. Of course, that's that's completely inappropriate to present these kinds of things to children at an age when they, they can't understand the concepts. The transgender yeah. issue is a, is, a, is, a, is a really key example of this, trying to protect transgender people 
and there's there's no there's no real um, legal definition of what a transgender child should be. There are children who have gender dysphoria and have issues around the kinds that's of really, that's a real medical condition. So it yes. used to be called gender identity disorder. Somebody who is really there's a, there, it's incongruent how they feel about their body and what yes. um, they feel that they that they are. But, but I'm it's not a physical. It's not a physical condition. It's a mental condition. It's not a physical condition. Exactly. And so what happens in the school is they start to present these ideas to children. So you get a five year old girl hearing about, oh, you, you could change to be a boy. And they wake up the next day and they're, they're, they're worried. Maybe they they may have changed gender. Well, that's the case of Nigel and Sally Rowe, isn't it? That's the, where where, in fact, what you had was young children in the school, uh, young boys going to school dressed as girls. Um, and it happened in the older son's year and then in, in the other son's year, and perhaps the case of Nigel and Sally Rowe, a link to be, can be put to their video and everything else. But I, what happened was that their children became confused. And yeah. Nigel recounts this story very clearly with his son saying, Daddy, uh, I'm, I'm worried. I'm going to worry that I'm going to wake up a girl. I, I'm confused. And, and you know, when and it's because children are unable to unpack this or they have to absorb it as truth. I remember very clearly, um, I'll tell you the first time I ever disbelieved a, a teacher. Right. And I could, because I can remember it. Mm. And I was 13. I was 13 years of age at Weymouth Grammar School. And my English teacher said in the classroom, there was no God. Right. And I remember standing up and saying, I disagree. I believe <laughs> there is a God. And But I was 13. Until that point, I had entirely absorbed everything that my teachers told me. I had been taught to respect them, to honour them. That's what that, we're talking 1960s, 1960s into the 1970s. Yeah. And what I remember for the that was the first time now if children are taught so it's not that children aren't di are different from a little andrew and Nikiello, they will be they will absorb what their teachers what their what adults say to them and so when adults say you can change gender or gender is fluid when adults say you can love anyone that you uh want to male or female when adults say that marriage can be anything when when adults say even to youngsters, that mm. you can have sex when you're ready, that that's that, that rather than um, the sexual expression between a man and woman is something that's very precious to be kept for marriage. When all of this gets normalized, yeah, all of, at a very young age, then what you're what you are reaping confusion and sexual confusion in your children, children. Yeah. and it's no wonder that yes. the recent poll showed that between eighteen and twenty. Um, Tim, you may well be on the figures better than me because you're you're always on the stats on this stuff. But it, between men and women, aged between eighteen and twenty-four, is it something like forty percent were identifying as bi or? No, no, it's definitely higher the younger you go, and it definitely when you get to the teenagers, it's it's. I thought it was more like twelve percent or that, but it's it's definitely getting a lot higher than the younger you go. The there was, there was a, a very shocking stat this week that came, that came right. out. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so, but Steve, can parents withdraw their kids from Pride celebration stuff in their school? I would. Right. Um, the issue is there's no statute that says you have a right to do this, but you have, you have rights as parents because under Article 2, Protocol 1 of the Human Rights Act, you have a right for your children to be taught in line with the philosophical convictions that you have and so if you feel those are being contravened then you need to say something in your in the school environment um right. there's also a right to remove your child from from sex education um that's still so there, there right. so there actually is a right and it, the thing is that schools do not determine the things that they're doing as being sex, sex education and so you as a parent have to work through the no when you're when you decide to do health education and you start talking about masturbation which is the kind of issue, I'm sorry to say, we've had coming through this week. I'm sorry, you're teaching sex education and I do not want my child in that. The, the, the sexualizing influences go across the curriculum. It's not just in what they declare to be sex education, but you have a right to remove your child from sex education. So in your processes of complaining, you can say, well, actually, by taking them on this trip 
or by doing whatever activity it is that you discover and you think that it is to do with sex, then it is a form of sex education. So there are rights there. And we've been helping um, under the radar and in cases, parents who are trying to push back against these kinds of sexualization of the curriculum. Can I also say, you know, um, to mums and dads out there and gra grand granddads and grandmas out there, that your children are your children. Your children are your children. It's not like when you give put them into school that suddenly they belong to the state. <coughs> the state exactly. is responsible for how their moral code is framed. You are responsible for how their moral code is framed, how they think, how they love. You are responsible for those things. Yeah. And, and I think that increasingly as, um, as adults responsible for, for children and, and, and as Christians responsible for children, we need to think very seriously about the children who are given, who are gifts to us from God, That's but also right. the children in our, in, in, who are in our churches. Because yeah. I think about the children in our churches and how they're growing up and how they're going to manage Pride Month at school. And I want to say, we're a, we want to help you. With that. We, we're a safe place for you. You don't have to be forced to accept this. No. Yeah. yeah. Now, listen, I think Mike's overcoming his tech problems. So hopefully we can bring Mike Davidson on um, from Excel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how are you, Mike? I'm very well, thank you, and apologies for what happened there, but I'm here, I think. Very good to see you. And and tell us a bit about, um, well, A, what you do, and B, um, your perspective on Pride events and Pride Month generally. Well, the thing is, Tim, almost every day of my life now, I'm speaking to uh, young adults in their 30s, 40s, late 20s, who have a story to tell about when they were growing up and they received a message. Uh, oh, I think we might have lost him again there, annoyingly enough. Um, yeah. Very annoying. Um, well, but imagine what he was going to say was they receive a message from a young age that this kind yeah. of sexual yeah. is fine. And it's, it's actually in those early, those young ages where that trajectory is set. You often hear people saying, well, you can't teach yeah. somebody to be gay. It's just what they are inside. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but you put a piano in front of a child, they'll want to play with it and explore it. And anyone that knows anything about children, what you present yeah. to them at young ages, yeah. the, the kinds of mentors, the kinds of people that you set out in front of them, they will aspire to and, and the kinds of opportunities you open up to, they'll want to explore. And that can That's be one of the first opening up. I think Mike's joined us again. It's going to be one of those first places where this can get opened up to children. Yeah. Mike, you can you hear us talk this time? Not sure we can hear us. Okay. So Steve, oh, but you I know on that. I just want to say uh, Steve has given the piano example and I gave you the example of the first teacher that I remember disagreeing with. Well, um some of you will know my story, but I I um grew up in a home where at, the, where at the time we weren't going to church but I was put on a bus to go to Sunday school and Mrs Hicks was my first Sunday school teacher and she told me all about Jesus and I fell in love with Jesus there and then yeah so this is the thing you know I was introduced to the living God who brings light and life and purity and a framework for living and that just imagine giving our children that hope but yeah. how come that beauty, that truth, that hope is something yeah. that is now viewed as immoral, that Christianity is viewed as oppressive and unkind yeah. and not accepting of pride? Yeah, when well, you see, part of, part of what I wanted to go on to then, Andrea, a little bit, because I know that Steve ran a conference last week for people yes. who want to set up Christian schools. And, and part of the reason they want to set up Christian schools, in fact, a key motivation, I think, is because they want to avoid this sexization of children. Tell us a bit about that, Steve. Your conference. It, it, it was a great day Saturday in, in um, the King Alfred School, which is one of the, the new um, schools as part of a new wave of new independent Christian schools that are starting. A lot of Christian parents, a lot of Christian leaders are waking up because they're seeing the kinds of issues that we're talking about when 
for many years the church has been blind to this or, or and certainly silent about this kind of area. So it was very heartening to have 60 people there from Dundee to Devon all gathering together to saying, how could we start something different? What could we be doing that could be different? Many people are home educating as well. They're taking their children out of the state system, taking responsibility for the education of their children. These are significant sacrificial steps that parents are making uh, in, in this whole kind of area. And just coming back to the, the pride thing, I saw I saw from um, JD in one of the comments, he just put a comment saying that pride, pride is a, is a sin. And um, yeah. it's fascinating, it's fascinating, isn't it? How this is now hiding in plain sight of all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Pride is the celebration. The, the we are key, proud of our sin. We're when proud do we celebrate sin. humility? When do we celebrate humility? We express, the, we exchange the truth for a lie and we celebrate yeah. the lie. Humility is a virtue and pride is not a virtue. So and, the, we, yeah. and of course, the key, the key thing is, is that, that pride was the, the sin of the enemy. The, the enemy who then brought Adam and Eve in their young existence into the fallenness of nature. And we see this attack on children and young people coming from an enemy who is exemplified by pride. And right from the from the womb, we see children attacked. I mean, we see children attacked in, in the Ukraine and in the USA by guns and weapons. And here in the UK, thankfully not that, but they are being attacked through ideas. They're being attacked by being welcomed and included into these celebrations. And through these ideas being sown at a young age, as I'm sure Mike would have been, been talking about, this is where the enemy is trying to rob and steal and destroy. And all that you're saying, Andrew, about the life and hope that we have in Jesus Christ is being denied to them at the same point that these things are being promoted. Pride is exactly. being promoted. The devil comes to rob, to thieve, to destroy. And Jesus comes to give life. And that's yeah. the, you know, and, and the thing that we don't realise is that actually what, what, uh, what happens here is that when our when consciences are dulled when sin gets celebrated when we get lost in our sin then then it then then sadly um it it it, it drain it, it's draining of life rather yes. than the giving of life and i love the comments let me, let me just read what my claire and carol can I just talk about claire and carol here because they've talked about being too scared to go to the teacher it's hard and I want to say it is hard, but I want to say to Clarol and to Claire and to all mums and dads out there, we are here. Yeah. We are here and we will help you write the letters. We will assist you. That's what we do at Christian Concern and the Christian Legal Center. We want to work with you um, under the radar, over the radar, but we will work with you to give you, tell you what the law is. Um, Steve's explained some of that, but to help you with the law, to work that through, but also just to just to just to, to uh, explain how, as parents, that you don't want your children to be involved in this. So have the courage to do that. And let me say this: don't do not be afraid, do not be anxious about it, but trust that as you go in peace to the head teacher and try to explain this, that the Lord will honour you. The Lord yes. will honour you in seeking to defend and contend for your children. And the only reason, of course, that pride ever became a thing is because people from the other side were very vocal and very unashamed of, of their own you know, practices and beliefs. Um, and all it needs is other people to be a bit more vocal, a bit more unashamed of their beliefs, Christians in particular, um, to actually change the culture. But let me just read what Mike Davidson has, has written. Unfortunately, he has not been able to get his computer working, but um, he says, every day I listen to young adults who were given no scope to work through their issues, they were told that they're gay and had no alternative but to believe the message right. and so took on a lifestyle they ultimately regretted. Schools need to provide options. The issues are deeply rooted in childhood passing. To provide no alternative is to indoctrinate. And then he goes on to say, we cannot allow schools to promote pride but ignore those who are regressors and those who've left LGBT and are no longer proud of their sexual identities um, but are proud of their new life in Christ. And I know that Mike is with, together with X Out Loud and Core Issues Trust is organizing an event tomorrow in London uh, called Unashamed. Um, X Out Loud, a whole load of ex LGBT people. Perhaps you can play the, um, there's a little promotion. Can I give a shout out as well for this, Tim? These yeah. people, I know the people that appear on this video and they're absolutely wonderful. If you are in and around London, please um, sign up. Uh, come and sign up to the event come and meet them here we're going to see real joy real freedom real life it's an amazing event these are amazing men and women 
And interestingly, they are the silenced voice right now yeah. in our country. They are a most discriminated group because yeah. so many people uh, say this voice should not be heard. It's a stay, it's a stay gay. You cannot change from that identity when in fact these people have found freedom in let's, change. Let's watch the trailer. Let's watch the trailer. Let's do, let's do that. Gay no more. Lesbian no more. Trans no more. Unashamed. We're coming together on the 28th of May in London from over nine different nations. I never wanted to be attracted to other men. I am ex-trans. I was fed up of living the double life. I was sexually molested as a kid. I became addicted to gay sex at the point that I prostituted myself with all men. I was married to another woman and thought I was living my dream life. But I met Jesus and I experienced love and power of God. The joy, the peace, the freedom that I experienced knowing who I am in God's eyes is overwhelming. He didn't make any mistakes when he created me. I will never go back to my own life. We are not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God to save. The world criticizes us and wants us silenced, but Jesus is standing to us. Come and meet us as we share our testimonies of living LGBT, seen in London on Saturday, 28th May. tomorrow in London. I think they're meeting in Marsham Street. I'm sure that my friends will put the links up. There's an Eventbrite page to sign up um, and that as well. And um, it's great to hear these testimonies uh, and they need to be heard. Ex, they do. Ex-gay, ex-trans, ex-LGBT. And I know, you know, I want it to go, I want those voices. Let, let's just imagine something different. Let's imagine, um, let's imagine Pride Month, June, um, reimagined. Let's reinvent it and let's call it light month truth month purity month let's fill our streets with the joy of the lord let's fill, fill our streets with another message with a life message let's fill our streets with stuff that brings hope and beauty let's not fill our streets with sexual exhibitionism let's not fill our streets with loads of alcohol and drunkenness Let's fill our streets with beautiful music, beautiful celebration, beautiful food, uh, dancing, love, joy. There's, there's, there is a different way. And let me say, it is it welcomes because every single human being is welcome in the sight of God. And every human being, every single human being meets a saviour at the cross who yeah. takes away their every sin to restore them. Uh, when they confess, he takes away their sin that they might know, know life and life in abundance because in Jesus Christ is life, not death. Amen. Yeah, fantastic. Well, do come along to that if you're around in London, able to get there. Uh, there'll be fantastic tears, testimonies. Otherwise, do look at the website, xoutloud.com and uh, watch some of their videos and stories. Um, as well there. It's very important to get these voices out there, um, the ex-gay, ex ex-LGBT uh, community. There are a lot of people who regret um, that kind of lifestyle and uh, and end up coming out of it. And of course, like Andrea said, Jesus saves and heals and cleanses and forgives and all of that uh, fantastic stuff. So um, we, Andrea, you said we've got Izzy Montague's case coming up in court um, the week after next. Also Christy Higgs, I think, as well. Um, is well, there, was a, there was Christy Higgs is a beautiful woman and I pray that, that those of you that are watching the stream if you don't know her case already go and watch her video she's a kind she's a quiet uh, lady um, and she had the courage she was one of only two parents that went to look at the books the sex ed books that the school were yeah. looking at and she was really concerned about what she saw. She put a message out in her private Facebook group and another parent complained about the fact that she put a message out with a series of links about the book saying, this, this, this lady, she basically, this, this friend complained to Christie's boss 
who was at the senior school where she worked, she was complaining about the books in the junior school. And then Christy underwent hours of interrogation, was suspended and then dismissed for gross misconduct. A gentler, more beautiful, more pastoral woman, and she was a pastoral yeah. assistant in the school, you could not meet. Yeah. And, but now that may sound, that may, I don't want that to scare anyone on this stream. Just if I do that, something like this will happen to me. No, because what we find with the people that stand, no matter what befalls them, is that there's a strengthening of faith. There's an ability to do things that they would never otherwise maybe do because the Lord provides at every stage. The Lord yeah. gives us courage. But yeah. we, ex you know, courage is the flower of conviction. When we're convicted about something, we act to speak, into the, tr to speak the truth. Um, yeah. It's not like something you can muster up ahead of the task. It's something that you do. But let's not the... forget, Andrea, that we won the case of Keith Waters, didn't we, just recently? That's um, right. Who tweeted critical of pride and the school discriminated against him. And the court found that he had been discriminated against. And uh, and therefore, what that shows is legally, you're totally within your rights to criticise pride. Totally within your rights to do it. That's an incredible win. That's such a valuable win that we have yeah. case law to state that for us now. Because Christian Concern, Christian Legal Centre, fought that case and won that case. Yeah. Yeah, so you're totally within the rights to criticise Pride and say you don't agree with it and you think it's wrong, all that kind of stuff. Um, really good to do. Well, listen, thank you for joining us. Um, really sorry Mike wasn't able to make it properly there. I hope we'll get him on another time. I'm sure we will. Um, do join him and others uh, tomorrow if you're able to do that. And uh, and do raise your voice uh, as, as we come into Pride Month uh, in your school or your workplace or wherever it is. Thank you. I think what would be really great is to play the unashamed video again on our way out as we outro. Great idea. Very good. Very good. Gay no more. Lesbian no more. Trans no more. Unashamed. We're coming together on the 28th of May in London from over nine different nations. I never wanted to be attracted to other men. I am ex-trans. I was fed up of living the double life. I was sexually molested as a kid. I became addicted to gay sex at the point that I prostituted myself with all men. I was married to another woman and thought I was living my dream life. But I met Jesus and I experienced love and power of God. The joy, the peace, the freedom that I experienced knowing who I am in God's eyes is overwhelming. He didn't make any mistakes when he created me. I will never go back to my own life. We are not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God to save. The world criticizes us and wants us silenced, but Jesus is standing to us. Come and meet us as we share our testimonies of living LGBT. Stay in London on Saturday, 28th May.